I can't talk like I used to talk to you. I, I can't sit up and talk mess to you. I, I can't sit up and talk about how bad stuff is. I, I can't sit up and talk about how sick I am, and then you tell me how sick you are. I can't sit up and tell you how broke I am, and then you tell me how broke you are. I'm breaking out of that. I'm about to say something right here. My father is rich. That means I'm rich. My father is healed. That means I'm healed. My father is delivered. That means I'm delivered. My father has joy. That means I got joy. I'm going to speak what God speaks. I ain't got time to have a pity party. I ain't got time to talk that smack. I ain't got to talk about your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife. God is. Welcome to Taking Authority. Of course, you know who I am. I'm Bishop Eddie Long, and I'm delighted to be able to minister to you in this moment and come into your home and to be a blessing to you and your family. I thank God for your support, and guess what? I have a special ministry established right now for you that's going to bless you tremendously. I am so excited about it. I'm going to stop talking, and we're going straight to the ministry. Luke 22, 31. Uh, I want to just lift this up very quickly. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as what? But I have what? That your what? Your faith should what? And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brother. Real quickly, I just want you to understand, look at me very quickly. I, I'm, I'm going to move through this. I'm just, I've, in the spirit, we have gone a tremendous distance. I need to just put substance under. Uh, something was going to happen. Jesus warns Simon, tells Simon, Satan's going to get you. Basically tells Simon he's going to fail. The other thing that he tells Simon is, <laughs> You may fall, but you're still going to make it. Which means he tells them at the beginning something's going to happen. Then he tells them what he wants them to do when it's over. I, I need you to know that some things happen in your life, and the Lord will tell you it's coming. Sometimes I knew things were coming, and I would say and pray, the Lord, don't let this happen. And the Lord said to them, say, yeah, it's going to happen. I'm just going to tell you, you're going to be alive on the other side. Touch your name and say, you're going to be alive on the other side. And say, alive with an assignment. Because the assignment was strengthen your brethren. That means he trusted you to go through this because he knew you wasn't going to quit. Now, when G I've talked about this so many times, I can't belabor it. When Jesus prayed for him, what did he pray? What did he, it's right there in the text. What did he pray? That is what? Come on, y'all talk to me. We can get out of here. Got to go to Waffle House. Come on. What? That his faith fails not, which means the Lord says, I don't care what you come through, what you have to deal with, is you can still hold your faith. I'm going to say that again. I don't care what kind of financial crisis you've been through, business crisis, embarrassment, whatever you've come through, you're going to come through because I prayed for you. And Jesus is saying to new birth today, just as long as you hold on to your faith, I got enough to get you up. I'm praying that your faith don't fail. Touch your name and say, hold on to your faith. I want to talk to you very quickly about moving in the faith of God. Go, go to Mark 11. Mark 11. Mark 11. 
You got Mark 11, say amen. Now, I'm going to read a little bit different from you because I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible. I'm going to start with verse 19. And when evening had come, came on, he and the disciples were accustomed and went out in the morning. When they were passing along, they noticed the fig tree was withered completely away at its root. And Peter remembered and said to him, Master, look, the fig tree which you had doomed had withered away. Uh, 22, and Jesus replied and said to them, have faith in God constantly. Say it with me, have faith in God. Look at me. The original text reads this. Uh, the original text says, have the faith of God. Say it with me, have the faith of God. Now, a, a little, little key thing, write that down, write it down, have the faith of God, write it down, and right before it, put Hebrews 11.1. 1. Something's going to happen mightily in here. You just had a foretaste next Sunday, and it's going to build all week. But first put Hebrews 11.1, 1, then write, have the faith of God. Say it with me again. Now, say it this way, make it personal. I must have the faith of God, not the faith of man, because God is not a man. Now, watch this. What he's doing is he's teaching them to challenge situations uh, uh, like the fig tree, be it physical or not. Uh, be it able to dethrone the power of Satan. God said, you have the ability through your faith, through the faith of God, to take Satan off his throne. And he explains, now here's, here's the crux of it, because there's a whole lot I could say, it, and I'm just moving and cutting through the chase. It's in Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 23, and Amplified said, and then I'm going to go to the New King James, Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he said will take place, it will be done for him. Now, the uh, uh, New King James says, for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed, and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have <laughs> oh, I got oh man. What's this now? Here's five keys to this text. The five keys to tell you how to operate in the power and faith of God. Now please understand. <laughs> Uh, the faith of God, only the faith of God releases results. I talked last Sunday about faith. That's where you got to have it and understand it. No matter what the situation looks like, no matter what the doctor says, it does not matter how the business is trending, or what the faith of God does in a situation is get results. Say, the faith of God gets results. Now, this teaches us that there is not an obstacle that should be able to stand before a confident, uh, a, a confiding faith in God. That's what it says. Now, here's point one from that text. Point one says, if you would say. That's point one. Say it with me. If you would say. Now, look at me. You got to be willing to open up your mouth and say what God said about the situation, watch this now, in spite of the circumstances. I don't care what it looks like. You got to be, I didn't say think it. There are too many of you that are too quiet. God made them walk around that Jericho wall seven times because when they got ready to say it, he wanted them to believe it. Now, they can walk around seven times and think it's coming down. They can walk around seven times and look like it's going to come down. But the only way it came down is when they opened up their mouth and... What's this? Our tongue is the vehicle that carries the power to the area that needs to be dealt with. Watch this. Bible says death and life is what? 
So when we speak, we get things moving and shifting in the spirit. Please, see, here's the problem. We sitting up there wanting something to happen that we can see. So while we're sitting there, uh, uh, so and so and so, and, and nothing happened because you, you, you missed the whole point. We walk by faith, not by sight. I'm walking by the faith of God, which means I'm walking by the things I can't see, that if I keep believing it, I will see it. So when I start saying it, things start turning. I look, let me give you an example. Just came to me. The Lord said, if you ever went to a vending machine, a, a, a drink machine or something, and you put the money in, and you press the button you want, First, you'll hear things turning, although you can't see it. But you don't walk away from the machine because it didn't just fall right quick. You hear stuff moving, and you hear it so you know something's going to happen. So you're waiting because that drink is going to manifest. God says when you open your mouth and start talking, you need to understand things are shifting in the atmosphere, and things are coming together. And if you can understand, you're shift and you're making bad things work for the good, and what was intended for evil is turning around and healing it, and you got to believe something. <laughs> I ain't got a few minutes. Got to get out of here. What was this? Where were I? So, so, so the kind of words that we release, we release the power of God, and that's that's, and they're not just regular words. Tell your neighbor, I, I don't have time. Get real proper. Say, I do not have time for casual conversation. The words I speak make things happen. And so I've got to speak the words of God and stay on track because I see the angelic host. Don't you see the angelic host are, are going before? Don't you see this is switching and changing? My life is being switched. I'm not tough time. My tongue is the vehicle for the Holy Ghost. I ain't got time to talk. Watch this now. So I ain't got time to release regular words. Uh, now watch this. Can I read it one more time? Just stay with me. Mark 11, 23. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things he says, will be done, and he will have, I need some help up in here. I'm trying to get, and he will have, Maybe I need to change the gender, and she will have. Is any ladies in the house? If the men can't say it, and she will have, and she will, that's what I'm talking about. I need some hungry, I will have. What's this? What's this now? Notice. In the text, I ain't got but a few moments because you know how y'all get a little angsty and can't stand. Uh, <laughs> Notice in the text, it says three times it mentions the word say. And only one time it mentions the word believe, which means you having whatsoever is not based on really what you believe. It's based on what you say. And if you can get your saying hooked up. Ow! Watch this. Watch this. See, touch your neighbor. Say, friend, sister, brother, I can't talk like I used to talk to you. I, I can't sit up and talk mess to you. I, I can't sit up and talk about how bad stuff is. I, I can't sit up and talk about how sick I am, and then you tell me how sick you are. I can't sit up and tell you how broke I am, and then you tell me how broke you are. I'm breaking out of that. I'm about to say something right here. My father is rich. That means I'm rich. My father is healed. That means I'm healed. My father is delivered. That means I'm delivered. My father has joy. That means I got 
joy. I'm going to speak what God speaks. I ain't got time to have a pity party. I ain't got time to talk that smack. I ain't got to talk about your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife. God is. Be sitting up coming in agreement with folk about hopeless. Oh, it's hopeless. There ain't no jobs out there. This next person come to you and say, ain't no jobs. Don't you speak that to me. That ain't my kind of worth. There's an abundance of jobs. I'm trying to pick which one I want. You cannot come in agreement with limitations. I'm declaring that everybody on that road gonna hear for the year out. And we gotta keep talking and talking it and talking it and talking it. Some of you need to go home and delete numbers out your phone. Call folks and say, look, I can't talk to you. I'm about to get a breakthrough and I'm tired of your mess. I'm tired of talking down. I'm tired of talking about hopelessness. I need some, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. I need somebody that understands, declare a thing, that thing shall. I need somebody with the faith of God. Now let me add this. I'm trying to get you out of here. Let me add this. Now, this doesn't mean that you cannot be real. It just means don't talk yourself out of faith. Psalms 15 and 2 said, He speaketh truth in his heart. Uh, watch this. Because, watch this now. Bishop, what, what, why is that? Because when we start talking about how bad things are, that gets into your heart. <sighs> so he says, believe one time, say three times. Why? Because you got to work three times as hard on what you're saying than what you're believing. What we are saying must be married to what we believe in our heart. And what we say becomes what's in our heart. Shall not doubt in his heart. The word, <laughs> the word doubt means to differ, which means don't let any difference from what your heart has and what your mouth is saying. Prove it, Bishop. If thou would confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and what? Believe that God raised him from the dead. Then, only then when the mouth and the heart are in agreement, Will you be saved? You can't just say it and don't believe it in your heart. That's an unofficial, uncertified salvation, which means it'll only register on new birth's record, but it ain't in the Lamb's book of life. Some of you came and we need to fix that this morning on an emotional trip, and you confessed it, but you didn't believe it. Because every time you pray, you pray in doubt. And you think God will only bless you when you had a good day. I didn't lie today, God, so I think he'll bless me. There ain't nothing you can do to be righteous. Until you accept the righteousness that Christ gave you at the cross, which means it wasn't just him dying, we were dying with him at the cross. He died for us, but we were there. Three minutes. What's this? The second. The first thing he said is to say. Say it's to say. Say say it. The next thing is the problem. What's this? Point two is the problem. There must always be a situation for faith to address. The text talks about the mountain. 
there must be a situation for you. In essence, our faith needs a target. Touch your neighbor and say, faith needs a target. The mountain in the text is the target. Your target could be sickness, poverty, your family. Jesus says, find a mountain or a target and aim your faith at that. Tell that mountain, go home and look at your checkbook. <laughs> your kids might run, Mommy, you call me? No, I'm talking to the checkbook. What do you mean? I, I, I done zeroed in on the target. Uh, the only thing I'm talking to right now is my finance. Finance, God said, I shall never lack. And so therefore, if God said it, the only things out of order is you. I'm speaking to you right now that you got to multiply. I've given my tithe, I've sown seeds, and I break every curse, everything, everything that's hindering, and I'm going to talk to you and talk to you and talk to you every day. It says, he says, he says, speak to it, give it a target. Number three, he says, and give that target instructions. He told the mountain, say it, he told the mountain, be cast in the sea. See, some of y'all let devils hang around too long. <laughs> Number four, believe. Accept the truth to be the truth. And blessed, happy, be envied is he who believes there would be the fulfillment of things that were spoken to her from the Lord. This is Mary. This is what the Bible said about Mary when she said, be it unto me as it is, as it is unto your word. And the Bible said, and blessed, happy to be envied is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of the things which were spoken to her from the Lord. What happened when she believed? Blessed, happy, and envied. When she believed, what happened? She was blessed, happy, and envied. What happens when you believe? Now, that means, please understand, don't be complaining. When you get haters, people say, Bishop, why do people hate you so? Because I'm blessed, happy, Envy is a sign that you're... So no, if you don't want to be blessed and happy because you want to be loved by everybody, I want to be loved by God. And if I'm loved by God, whoever else I need to be hooked up with, he'll hook me up with. But the evidence of your blessing is haters. Join Apostle Eddie L. Long for the 2015 Kingdom Power Glory Summit. Catch the revelation September 8th through the 11th, 2015 at the Diplomat Resort and Spa in Greater Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You will receive revelatory knowledge and tools on how to fulfill your God-given purpose in the kingdom and marketplace. Pastors, leaders, and entrepreneurs from around the world come experience life-changing enrichment and empowerment at the 2015 Kingdom Power Glory Summit. Join Apostle Eddie L. Long and other renowned speakers and business leaders at the 2015 Kingdom Power Glory Summit, an awesome international conference you don't want to miss. The 2015 Kingdom Power Glory Summit will culminate with an all-white glory yacht celebration. Come experience God's glory. If you've ever been impacted by new birth and the ministry of Bishop Eddie L. Long, if you've ever been to Focus Spirit and Truth or the Kingdom Conference, you don't want to miss the Kingdom Power Glory Summit. Register online at kpgsummit.com. Don't miss it. God says to have the faith he has, like Jesus had. No storm, fig tree, or sickness held Jesus back. He spoke to the trouble and the situation changed. 
you can speak to trouble the way Jesus spoke to it. And as a result, your business, your marriage, your children, your health will change for the better. God says when you open your mouth and start talking, you need to understand things are shifting in the atmosphere and things are coming together. And if you can understand your shift and you're making bad things work for the good and what was intended for evil is turning around and healing it and you've got to believe something. In the message you experienced today called Moving in God's Faith, Bishop Long shared just a portion of the revelation on how to have the faith Jesus had. In the full-length message, Bishop reveals the five powerful steps that Jesus used and that you can use to calm and quiet storms in your life. And Bishop wants you to get this message completely free. Here's how. When you call today with your generous love gift of $30, you will receive the three-part CD series, Faith and Hope, where you will discover how to walk in complete biblical faith to overcome every situation in your life. Some of you need to go home and delete numbers out your phone. Call folks and say, look, I can't talk to you. I'm about to get a breakthrough and I'm tired of your mess. I'm tired of talking down. I'm tired of talking about hopelessness. I need some magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. I need somebody that understands, declare a thing, that thing shall. I need somebody with the faith of God. When you call to get faith and hope for your gift of $30, you will also receive the message you heard today, moving in God's faith completely free. With these two powerful resources, you can develop the type of faith you need to produce the results you deserve and that God wants for your life, no more doubt. Start winning in life with faith that allows you to operate in the power of God. Together, the message Moving in God's Faith and the series Faith and Hope are valued at over $40. But today, you can experience these life-changing resources for your generous gift of just $30. And listen, as part of his way of saying thank you for your gift of $30 today, Bishop Long will also send you his popular message, Hold Fast to Your Faith. Learn to be anchored in your faith no matter what might come your way. Imagine a life where you dominate the devil, operate in God type of faith and power, and speak to your problems a language that produces the results you need today. What are you waiting on? Call and get started today. Whenever you receive great ministry, you always seal it with a great prayer. And I want to pray for you right now that what God spoke to you will move and manifest greatly in your life. So, Father, we honor you, bless you, and thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for life, and thank you for life abundantly. Thank you for the saints of God who are rising up to possess the kingdom. And we move in your power and your grace right now in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I'm looking forward to being with you next week. I have a great word for you that's going to bless you tremendously. Hey, and if you're watching, get somebody else to sit with you. Bring somebody into the ministry that we'll all be able to bless one another and take authority. God bless you. See you next week.